Hey again, this is Mark and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Uh, today I want to talk about how to turn your iPad into a light table to draw on. So uh, I'm covering it with uh, clear plastic wrap to protect the iPad from paint and watercolor. And uh, what I did was I did a drawing that was too big for the size I needed. So I reduced it. I scanned it in my computer, reduced it on the computer, and printed it out on just printer paper. And as I turn the light pad on, uh, the iPad on, <laughs> I'm calling it a light pad, you'll see when I put this 300-pound uh, watercolor paper, it's hot pressed, so it's pretty thick, the light just comes right up through. Now, typically you'd want to be in a dark environment, so I, I kind of put the shade down a little bit, and I got my watercolors out, and you can see that the drawing comes right up through that paper, nice and clear. Uh, sitting in front of me, it's a lot clearer, so here on the video, you can get the feel for it. I'm just going to set up these watercolors here, and uh, the benefit for this for me is that, uh, you know, I had gone out to shop for a light table. Uh, I went to like AC Moore and Michaels and things like that, and as I'm walking around looking at these light tables, I'm thinking, first of all, some of the tablets they have for light tables look a lot like an iPad. But also, for me, you know, I didn't want to spend the extra money on an accessory that I may not use that much. So a light table, you know, I had one when I was younger, and it was great uh, back then because we didn't have a lot of technology back in the, the 80s and so forth. And uh, the one I had was huge. It was this big, bulky, monstrous thing. Uh, it was made of wood and, like, a countertop material. And uh, it had light bulbs inside, fluorescent light bulbs, these small fluorescent light bulbs. And I remember when one of the light bulbs burned out, uh, I went to look for it, a new one, and uh, I couldn't find it anywhere. So I ended up just shoving it, like, under my couch or in an attic or something, and I forgot about it. I actually forgot about it for a long time, years until I had a yard sale, and I pulled it out, plugged in, and said, oh, I remember this, yeah. And I, I hadn't used it in years, so gone. Got rid of it and never thought about it again. But like my old airbrush equipment, which I thought I'd never use again, and I got rid of that too, there comes a time later in life when you say, geez, I kind of wish I had that thing because I could use it right now. And that's what happened with my light table. There's been times, a couple of times, when I've needed something similar and I just didn't have it. And that's how I kind of came across this technique here, was out of necessity. I, I, Like I said, I went shopping, and the prices of these things were a lot higher than I wanted to spend. I could make one myself. I could build something, you know, with the electronics, get a ballast for a light, uh, you know, do the same thing of, you know, the fluorescent light bulbs. But I don't have time for that. I don't want to sit around and deal with all that stuff. It's too much, too much effort. The solution of the iPad came when I, I saw something in a store and I said, geez, that, that looks like my iPad and I bet I could do that at home. So I immediately came home and I tried it. And so I did it with the printer paper and then I put the watercolor paper on top of it. So just to do a sketch with just normal printer paper, easy as anything. It just comes right up through and it was real simple to draw on. With the watercolor paper, I figured it's not going to work as well. It worked great. And then I tried it with two pieces of 300-pound, you know, hot press watercolor paper, and I tried it with a cold press, too, and it worked just fine. It's when you start adding another layer of that printer paper or even a third layer of watercolor paper that you, you start to break down and you can't see too clearly. For me, this method of the printer paper with the watercolor paper on top works just fine. And I'm grateful because normally I would draw in ink or light pencil on the watercolor paper and then paint. This allows me to just paint. I don't have to do any sketching. I don't have to do any inking. And once I'm done, here I'm just going to pull this off and get rid of this stuff. So now I can actually do the inking after the fact instead of before, which is not how I normally work. So this is Actually, mm, I loves me some coffee. Sorry. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> so here I have my Copic multi-liners. These are the disposable Copic markers. Uh, they're black ink. They're great. Uh, you know, I use dip pens sometimes. I use uh, the Pigma Micron marker. Uh, 
you know, these are great pens. They're disposable. The dip pens are nice too. But uh, these Copics are so simple and easy to use. Plus, I can use them with the colored Copic markers because they don't bleed and the alcohol doesn't pull them away. So um, it's kind of a cohesive family unit of Copic products, um, which I don't have any stake in. So that's just what I use. But uh, so you can see here, I get to draw on top of the watercolor. Um, any of the watercolors I use that have a little bit more opacity than you know, the transparent colors, not a problem now because I can just draw right on top of them. So this has been a great way for me to find a solution to resizing drawings and, you know, using it to my advantage. Here's the, um, this is a cool gray Copic marker. I don't always use this. This, this just seemed to be like, okay, I can put some shadows in here and some little, you know, kind of accent features. You can see I'm just kind of putting it in around where it might need it. But um, no, you can, that's another thing I do. This multimedia is fine. I could use colored pencils on this. I could, there's a lot of things you can do with this, but for this, uh, for this demonstration, this is just uh, kind of filling in some details here. And the Copic marker works great on the watercolor. The alcohol doesn't pull it off, and it gives me the nice details. You, you don't really see them, but they're there, so it, it works. And that's pretty much that. So I hope you enjoyed this part of the video where I'm showing you how to use the um, iPad as a light table. There's another trick to using this, and that is if you were to take your original drawing, or this is just that printer paper again, you can actually take a picture with the iPad. And here I'm going to zoom in on just this one house. So say I want to just do this one house but bigger. Take a picture of the iPad. I'm using this as the... Um, sketches app you can import that into the sketches app and i can either work digitally on that image now and and do that or again i can put down the clear wrap to protect the ipad watercolor paper and i can zoom out zoom in resize do whatever i want to get that you know onto the um onto the paper so there you have it i hope you enjoyed this video and and if you're looking for a, a solution to having a light table and you have an iPad, maybe give it a try. So again, thank you so much for watching and please subscribe if you'd like to get more content like this. Have a great afternoon and thanks for watching.